Today on Crossing South, folks, we find a $3 zip line, we check another of the many off-road races Baja has to offer, and we eat all kinds of goodness right here, right now. You know, it seems that in every trip that we take, Baja's natural beauty gives us a treat that is not man-made, just to give us perspective, and just to remind us how diverse and wonderful its locations are. So just below the awesome boulders of La Rumorosa lies the frying pan, which is also known as Mexicali. Well, just in the summertime. Good thing for us, we're here in winter. So it's a town that's really made the transition from agricultural to industrial. So after enjoying a walk in this friendly city, we found our way back to the city zoo. And it is here that we find the ride that we somehow missed the last time we came. Okay folks, so on this time around, our second visit to Mexicali, uh, we we missed something last time when we came to the zoo. We're in the zoo again, but there's actually a canopy tour here too. There's a zip line and we missed it. So this time we came back around to try to complete the, uh, complete the deed uh, by going on that thing uh, today. And it's really, uh, really affordable. It's 50 pesos will we'll take you up on that zip line uh, back and forth. So uh, it's pretty cool, I think. Right, and here I have my friend Efrain. How you doing, Hi, my friend? How are you? Yeah, good, good, good. Efrain, so what are we doing today? Okay, uh, left leg, please. Left leg, all right. Right leg. Right leg, okay. Feels pretty tight, which I'm hoping equals pretty safe, right? <laughs> Has anyone died doing this? Uh, it's it's easy. Has anyone dead? Anyone died doing this? No, no. No? no, no. I just had to ask. Just <laughs> come with me. Oh boy. Here we go to high places again. How easily I forget. I, I don't know how many places in North America there are where you can go on a on a nice zip line for like three bucks. That's how much the thing costs. So uh, even the one in Las Cañadas we went to, I think that canopy chair was up at 200 pesos uh, or more. So like three bucks for this? Not bad. Oh man, you wanted a scared look? This is genuine, folks. Uh, point your camera down there just so you see what we look at. It's, the thing's trembling. Why is it shaking? Oh my goodness. Why do they do that? Why wouldn't they put something on the floor there? Oh, oh man. Oh man. I am super afraid of heights. This is too much for me. You know, the zip line is actually fun, but the tower, its height, the see-through floors, it's just a confluence of frightening factors for me. But once you go, oh, you go. Folks, this thing flies. The rail seekers really do get their money's worth right here, and then some. Hey, I've forgotten how scary and how fun that was. <laughs> the sliding's fun once you clear the the earth part, the part where you can fall to a, just a screaming death. And <laughs> once you clear that, once you're over water, you feel good. <laughs> I'm just too scary, folks. I'm just not made for this. I've forgotten how scary. It was. <laughs> okay, let's go back. <laughs> Folks, unless I get amnesia, you're probably seeing my last zip line ever in life. Alright, <laughs> 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 folks. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Oh, thank you. Thank you for keeping me alive. <laughs> Zip line folks. <laughs> oh, some people love them. And some people like me just do them because I gotta. So <laughs> I hope you liked it. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, we got more stuff to do. Let's go to some other safer activities. Follow us along, folks. You're about to see something really brave from really tiny people. It's a pretty big slide, but it seems to be safe. I think that's why they ha it has multiple curves there, uh, multiple levels, so they don't just fly down and torpedo down. So, definitely a fun place for the fam. You know, the people in Mexicali sure know how to eat, be it their famous Chinese restaurants, well-known fact that this place is really abundant in such cuisine, or one of their many street taco stands. Now, this doesn't really look good or, or that appealing, but it, believe me, it tastes great. But today, we decided to hit a pizza parlor that came highly regarded. All right, folks, so we're here in Mexicali still, and uh, we are at a very cozy little pizza parlor called uh, Fontana Pizza. And uh, we're enjoying ourselves, as you can see, uh, enjoying a full spread. And I'm here with Alfonso Lacarra. How are you doing, Alfonso? Fine, fine, thank you. <laughs> He's the organizer uh, of a race we're going to show you uh, later on. W what's the name of the race, uh, Alfonso? It's, uh, the promotion is Code Up Road, and the, this particular race uh, is the Mercado de Refacciones Grand Prix race. Usually in desert races, you know, we start the cars one by one, and they go from point A to point B. Uh, in this Grand Prix race, it's, a, it's heat race is what we have, and we start them all side by side, like okay. in a Land Rover start. Uh, all at the same time. All of them? Well, all per, classes per or, class. or all per, per class? It goes per, per class. class, but you know, your class starts at the exact same time. Right. So it's very, very exciting. Instead of, instead of by time. Instead of one by one. It's a free for all. Land rush start <laughs> and uh, you... Flag drops and everyone goes, okay, okay. So, so where are your racers normally from? Well, mainly, you know, we're based out of Mexicali, but we put on races in Jacumet Tecate, Ensenada, San Felipe, and, and Mexicali. And the people that are racing these uh, races, they're, they're locals from Baja? Well, we have a lot of locals from Mexicali, obviously. Uh, that's where we're based at. But we have a lot of racers that come from San Felipe, Sonora, Ensenada, Baja okay. Sal, different parts, and also from the U.S., you know, our neighboring okay. states like Arizona, California, Nevada. Okay. okay. Well, we've been doing this for 14 years now. Uh, you know, uh, my partner and I used to be racers a long time ago, and, uh, you know, we wanted to have races like we thought they should be, and that's, uh, that's why we got into this. We've okay, been putting well, on, you know. How should they be? Well, better, Explain to me, I'm better organized, you know, more promotion, <laughs> uh, bring in more racers from outside our local Mexicali area. Okay. Know? And you've been accomplishing that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we have a lot of racers from the U.S. and, and different parts of Mexico also. How many racers per race are you averaging right now? I would say we average, depends. Some, some are a little, a little bit more popular than others, but I would, I would say on average we have about 140 to 150 entries per race. Okay. Okay, okay, enough about cars and more about the pizza. Really good pizza. Mm -hmm. You got these tomatoes with seasoning and uh, and olive oil and they're just delicious and I'm just pouring them all over my pizza little thing I do mm. you know this cozy hole in the wall is really worth bookmarking and it's one of the many places that makes this city worth visiting but as if this wasn't enough we traversed the city looking to wash down our meal with a worthy brew. And oh boy, we got more than we bargained for. You know folks, most watering halls in Mexico are concession to specific beer brands. Meaning that when a bar or a watering hole uh, is concession to a beer, it forbids you from selling any other beer. So you're very limited in your options. Well, we found a place here in Mexicali that refuses to give in. Now the place is called El Sume, and we are actually here with Javier, 
Hello. Sunshine? Nice to meet you. Javier Sanchez, but they call him Sunshine. Javier Sanchez, yeah. who is the proprietor of this place. Javier, how are you doing? Just fine. <laughs> Very happy to have you here. Well, we're happy to be here. Uh, I see you have a fantastic international spread uh, yeah. of beers, which is very uncommon yeah. in Mexico. It's not, it like you can, it's not like you can find a place like this it is. at every corner. You refuse to give in to the man. Yeah, yeah, we refuse that. <laughs> you know, we all, uh, we all drank sometime Tecate or Corona or whatever, but uh, uh, we, we, we discovered a lot of beers in the world, you know, when you travel or, or, or simply by going to San Diego. Right, right, you go to the States and yeah. you see. And, and then we decided to, put a, to, to, to open a place like this, like El Sume, where you can buy any kind of beer, beers from Europe, from South America, from, uh, I don't know, Japan, uh, and Mexico too, and Mexicali, a lot of craft beer made in Mexicali. We've tasted a few. Yeah, and you're gonna taste a few more okay. in a little while. <laughs> okay. If you don't mind. No, 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 I don't mind, I don't mind. Okay. I don't mind. <laughs> but that's, that's the whole point. We, we've been trying for, uh, for three years now to promote the good beer, you know? Uh, handmade beer, craft beer, and beer from all over the world. That's the, the whole point of this place. Well, How many countries are represented in your fridge right now? Uh, countries, I think it's about 20 countries. 20. Yeah, it's about 120 different levels, uh, you know, beers uh, uh, regularly around here. No? If you notice, we don't have TVs. You, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I hadn't that, noticed. This, this is a place where you can uh, talk. Right. Where you can. Uh, have a conversation with, with somebody like the old days yeah like the old days in the music uh, it used to be low nothing like a bomb bomb right bomb. you can actually have a conversation See, so, like you and me right now yeah yeah no tvs no loud music good beer that's that's the point well javier uh are you gonna let us try some of your product of course of course uh, no, obviously we can't drink everything you got no, there no no you can, Nor but you can, but, <laughs> uh, but this is uh, called Centenario. Centenario, it's Cent from Mexicali. It's from Mexicali. It's made from a guy around here, uh, and uh, this is an IPA, an India Pale Ale. Okay. Uh, it, you can, if you smell it, it's a very uh, herbal beer. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, like you're drinking grass or something like that, you know. And if you taste it, well, taste it. And, May I? Yeah, sure. And you're gonna tell if you, you're gonna tell me if you, if you, if you like it. Oh, wow. Mm. Boy, it has a bitter aftertaste. Yeah. Very fresh going that's, in. That's the the thing in the IPAs. It has to be that way. Yeah, it has to be that way. Yeah. If it's not, uh, if it, if you don't have that kind of flavor or sourness, uh, it's not an IPA. Very nice. So this is it. As I was telling you, there are only two families, but each family has a lot of sons, okay. a lot of styles, a lot of lagers, and a lot of ales. Okay. It's about 142 different styles, according to the Brewers Association of America. Okay. You know, that, that's a lot. Wow. That's <laughs> a lot. So let's try your stout here, uh, your right. fogata. Who makes it? Okay, fogata. Let me see if the guy is here. La fogata la está haciendo el amante, ¿verdad? O tú. Ah, no. Ari Mateo. He's the man. My brother. He's the man. How are you doing, my friend? You liked it? You're the, I'm about to taste it. So. Okay. <laughs> I hope you liked it, man. Yeah, he's the guy. Well, let's try it. Let, let me try it, all right? Yeah, try it. Very nice. Very good taste. Good job, my friends. Good job. <laughs> well, Javier, we appreciate your time. You having a place like this where we can come and have a different style of beer yeah. in Mexico. Yeah, in Mexico. <laughs> and, and I'm sure the local population likes it. So thank you very much for talking to us. Mexicali was definitely good to us. As we left back west, we found an overnight storm left the Rumorosa dressed in white. The Rumorosa is 4,000 feet above sea level. So precipitation manages to stay as snow at such heights.
When we left our hotel, the road was actually closed and nobody could get through, but they opened it just as we hit it. Fantastic. Yeah, that really looks fun. I think I'll take my own walk. You know, folks, one of the uh, characteristics of Baja is you can leave for a very specific activity in the morning and find yourself in a completely different one. We were, we left uh, for this segment, for this episode, uh, we left our homes and, and this, embarked on this trip to do uh, summer activities uh, in the heat. But look at what we found here at the Rumorosa. This is the area, the mountainous area between Tecate, between Mexicali, between Tijuana. And a storm overnight just dumped this and it makes for a very beautiful landscape. So uh, let's take a walk in it and uh, enjoy the scenery. Let me adjust my Yushenka. Let's take a walk. Probably make a snow cone out of this. Make it nice and nice and tight. So from the Rumorosa, we moved to the town of Tecate. This is a very small city. It has its small town charm. It still has its plaza reminiscent of southern Mexican towns, and it is here that we find the famous self-proclaimed best Tecate sweet bread. Oh, we need to corroborate this. You know, some are flower pickers, others are fruit nippers. I am a sweet bread picker. Hey folks, thank you for continuing with us. We are now in a place in Tecate that serves uh, pastries, but it's not just any kind of pastry. You know, I have friends from the East Coast that actually have come to Baja, and one of the things they say they like is the pan dulce. The pan dulce is the pastries that they have here in Mexico. Now here in Tecate, we're in a very, very old uh, pastry place, and it's called El Mejor Pan de Tecate, which is the best bread in Tecate. So it's arguably the best uh, pastry shop here in, in Baja, some say. So let's get to know the place and, and come follow me along. Well, we are here now with Anna Castro. Anna, nice yeah, to meet nice you. To meet you Thank you for having us in, in your pastry shop. It's a pleasure. She, she is the, uh, you're the marketing yes. person? And this is a family owned business, yes. right? And my, my grandfather uh, founded here. Your, your grandfather is the one that originated this place, yes. right? Then what year was that? 1942. 1942? Oh yes. <laughs> it's a lot of time. It's a long time to be making pastries. Yes. And, uh, and then my mother worked, and then I'm working here. So it's a family tradition, and we are here. Oh, really? Yes. So it was your grandfather, then your mom, and now, now it's Anna, yes, right? Anna. <laughs> so what is it that makes the bread here at the Mejor Pan Dulce in Tecate? What makes it so good? What is your signature? Okay, our ovens are made of, of bricks and they are traditional. Oh, um, traditional brick ovens. Yes. And, and that adds a flavor to the bread? Yes, that makes the flavor very tasty and, and good. <laughs> tasty, you just said a key word for me. I like tasty. <laughs> Are you going to let us try some of your stuff? Of course. Okay, <laughs> okay Anna is saying that in order to pick these uh, tasty uh, delights, I need my weapons. And you see the armory here? So this is my sword and shield of choice. <laughs> this is what I need to pick it up. Now, how many flavors do you have? How many types of bread do you have in your repertoire here? We have 200. 200? Yes. Wow. Yes. 200 times. I don't think I can fit 200, <laughs> but we'll try to pick the ones that look the best. Okay. okay? okay. <laughs> this looks big. Están muy buenos. Oh, donut. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see what a thousand leaves is. This one looks like a fruit cake. I gotta try it. So this, this is, this is, this is as Mexican as it gets, yes. right? And el virote también puede ser. Uh, okay. You know what, you know this, it just, it's just winking at me, so <laughs> I just have to, it just looks very good. <laughs> it wants me. <laughs> So you said that another very typical, typically Mexican uh, piece of bread is, is what, what you call it? Virote. So this is the virote. So, so how do people eat this normally? Like we, we make the This is in tortas. sweet, right? No. This is in sweet. So no. this is this is salty. Yes, yeah, salty. Oh, okay. We make the torta. The tortas, yes. right? So, so it's basically like a Mexican burger. You, you slice this open and you put cold cuts and veggies and mayo and whatever you want yes. to put in it, right? Like a sandwich, but... This. Like a sandwich. All right, all right. We're going to get to taste this stuff. Man, I'm just getting fatter in every episode. <laughs> right. Okay, let's do this. Let's okay. do this. <laughs> okay, folks, so this is the moment of truth right now. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually taste this stuff. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you have your, your Mexican buttermilk biscuit. Like a donut. <laughs> It is so good. <laughs> Chocolate coconut donut. donut. <laughs> Mexican fruit cake. <laughs> <laughs> I know you folks are laughing back home. Seeing me just gobble this stuff up. Okay, let's try this. Oh wow. Mm. I feel like a judge in a bread tasting contest. <laughs> <laughs> this one is a uh, pineapple and cheese square. You know, this one was actually winking at me. So it was, what do you think it was saying to me? Eat me, please. Eat me, please. <laughs> <laughs> it was saying that. So I aim to please. And uh, here we go. Oh wow. <laughs> This is so big. I just don't know how to eat this. Can I just rip it? Yes. And just just rip it out. And it's it's full of, of fruit. Just just fruit. Every, every time I eat a pastry that has stuff inside, it's like it's like a kid getting a prize. You know, you're filling. In this case, you're fruit filling. Quadruple bypass triple decker <laughs> <laughs> contraption bread. Now, I can't eat this that way because look. It's too big. It's too big. I would literally have to put it in through my nostrils. So, what we'll do is we'll just take off a layer. Is that okay? Yes. We'll take off a layer and just. You know what? It just occurred to me, Anna. <clears throat> You don't look like someone who really uh, tries a lot of your product. <laughs> well, I don't think we would do this place any justice unless we tasted the Mexican conchita. And uh, that is exactly what we'll do. Stay with us, folks. Continue exploring with us. Thank you very much, Anna. Let me eat my conchita now. <laughs> Hey, what can I say, folks? Familiar outing, right? We ate, we drank, enjoyed nature, and experienced some thrills. So we hope you join us again when we punch an adventure the next time we cross south. You can find maps and information about the places you just saw, or you may order a copy of this program on DVD at CrossingSouth.com. We also do Facebook.